Welcome to tonight's uh, meeting of the Muskogee City Council for <coughs> September 27th, 2021. We will have the invocation by Councilor Alex Reynolds, followed by the flag salute. Let us stand. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, please forgive us of our sins. Thank you for bringing us here to do the business of the city. Please guide us and give us strength as we work for our constituents and all the fine folks in Muskogee County and the city of Muskogee. Lord, please bless us and guide us and carry us through our actions tonight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to the flag. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. We're all accounted for. We will now entertain a motion to excuse Dr. Hoos. That's so moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Before we go into the minutes, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the members of the President's Leadership Council from Connor State College who are here with Dr. Ramy. Those two young ladies will stand. Certainly we are happy that they are interested in how government works. Welcome to the meeting on tonight. Uh, we will now consider the approval of the minutes of the Special Call City Council for August 31st, 2021, and the City Council regular session for September 13th, 2021. Have we reviewed the minutes? Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second on the minutes. Any further discussion or corrections? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. We will now consider the consent agenda, which consists of items number one through seven. Are there any items that a councilor would like to move to the regular agenda, or do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. We will now consider item number eight. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of Ordinance 4129A to rezone property addressed as 922 North York Street, being more particularly described in the ordinance from R1, single family local commercial, to C1, local commercial, and if authorized, approve staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. We may need to wait on the PowerPoint or not. Certainly we, we can. can. <laughs> there it is. Um, it is a request from the Northeastern Oklahoma Healthcare Centers to rezone the property that's addressed as 922 North York. Uh, the preliminary and final plat uh, was just approved on the consent agenda that will make it lot one, block one of Northeastern Oklahoma Healthcare Centers. Um, the um, request is to go from the por portion that is R1 residential to C1 local commercial. It is to allow for the development of the new medical offices. Uh, the surrounding zonings are <laughs> the um, C1. There are a few uh, across the street that are C2, but it is um, meets the comprehensive uh, plan and uh, future land use map and staff Planning Commission and Public Works recommend approval. Be happy to answer any questions. And representatives from the Northeastern Oklahoma Healthcare Center are here if they have any questions. No one has signed up to speak to the public hearing, so we will close it at this time. Uh, Mr. Miller, are we going to have a slideshow? Oh, there we go. Yep. There's the site for those that didn't see it, round one. Uh, that's from across the street. And then it does show the um, surrounding zonings. The uh, east half, three quarters, was what was zoned R1, so we've just made the legal description that it's all zoned C1 now. 
Thank you, Ms. Callahan. Yeah. We've already closed the uh, public hearing. Do we have any comments or questions from the council or a motion to proceed? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on this item tonight? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number nine? Hold a public hearing and consider approval of Ordinance 4130A to rezone property addresses 3329 South Cherokee Drive, being more particularly described in the ordinance from R1, single family local commercial, to I1, light industrial, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We do have PowerPoint up and ready. This is a request from uh, the applicant is Wendy Qualls. The owner uh, currently is still Charlie Andell. He's selling the property um, that is located there on Cherokee. Its address is 3329 South Cherokee. It's to request to go from the R1 single family residential to the I1 light industrial is to allow for a new um, nursery and retail center center to be developed um, called Sunshine 2. It'll be a second location from one that's already located in Tahlequah. This is the site south of Keek along Cherokee. And there's the picture of the vacant land currently. And these are the surrounding zonings. There, it's currently zoned R1. To the north is industrial. To the south of and within that property is in the floodplain. And then to the east is zoned uh, planned unit development, single family. It is a uh, floodplain property. Uh, it would be very difficult to, to develop. Staff, Planning Commission, and Public Works recommend approval. And it does uh, meet the comprehensive plan and future land use map recommendations. Thank you, Ms. Callahan. No one has signed up to speak to this item, so we will close the public hearing. We will now entertain comments or discussion from the council or a motion to proceed. Move, Move for, for approval. approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the council? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 10. Receive report on status of COVID-19 in Muskogee and take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, Mayor, members of Council, uh, this is our, our ongoing report. Um, we have uh, Tyler Evans and I believe some guests here to, uh, to address the current situation and we'll answer any questions or entertain discussion after that. Mr. Evans. Yes, good afternoon, Mayor, members of Council. In front of you should have your uh, COVID packet you're used to seeing. I'll go over some of the numbers, some of the stats and charts and graphs where we're at this week. Uh, the city of Muskogee, as of last Wednesday on the 22nd, had 296 cases and 170 deaths. This has added, uh, unfortunately, 21 additional deaths to the city of Muskogee total since we started the month here in September. However, if you notice from one month ago, uh, we're down quite a bit on our active cases. Uh, August 4th, we were at uh, 267. We went up to 394. There's September 1st, and we're going back down. We're at 296 as of the 22nd. Uh, pretty much all the counties in the state of Oklahoma are still in the orange category for the uh, high risk level. We're currently at 79.2 cases per 100,000. Uh, there was a little over a 15% decrease in the number of cases reported uh, from the previous week. So we hope to continue to see that trend go down. Uh, Muskogee Public Schools uh, is showing 23 total cases for students and staff that are in isolation. That was last updated on the 22nd. Some good news on the vaccine data. Uh, as of today, Muskogee County, 50.4% of citizens over the age of 12 have been fully vaccinated. So that's some good news. 63.2% uh, have received at least one dose. Uh, the 65 and up age group is almost 78% fully vaccinated and at least almost 92% have received one dose of the vaccine series. According to the epidemiology report, as of September 20th, for the prior 30 days, uh, there have been 2,560 hospitalizations. Out of those hospitalizations, 2,295 were unvaccinated or 89.6%. 
Um, as of this morning, there were six available ICU beds in the state and approximately 173 ED hodes waiting for a bed. So that was kind of a refreshing number to see uh, day after day over the previous weeks as constantly been zero, been zero, been zero. So to see uh, some beds available uh, at least a day was hopefully a good sign for things to come. Uh, on the following page, you have your City of Muskogee Active Cases uh, chart graph. You can see we're on week number three of our downward trend, uh, September 1st kind of being the, the peak there. Uh, there's the high-risk map I was talking about. You have one county out there that happens to be in the yellow, but the, the rest of us are in the orange category. Page three shows the vaccine percentages I was talking about. It breaks it down by 12 years of age and older, the entire population, 65 years in age and up. The following pages uh, are really breaking down the, there's a page that talks about the variant strains and then it kind of breaks it down into the different vaccines, their effectiveness, so on and so forth. I don't want to dive into that right now. I thought some of you might want to take this home, kind of look at it. It is some interesting information. Uh, over on page nine, though, are some charts and graphs for cases and deaths. Uh, Oklahoma COVID-19 cases by date of onset. We're showing a downward trend there along with the, uh, the graph below it. And on the very back page on page 10 is one that you guys are used to seeing. I've included quite a bit is our COVID-19 related emergency department visits. Uh, it's been going down for a couple of weeks and it looks like we're hopefully continuing that trend downward uh, for the number of people going to the hospital needing to go to the emergency room for COVID related symptoms. Um, Ms. Delby Walker of the Muskogee County Health Department is here tonight. I'd like for her to speak on um, the COVID-19 booster shot that, uh, that Pfizer has. I've included that on the last page of the packet. So to speak on that tonight is Ms. Walker. Ms. Walker. So you guys know that what the FDA um, passed and the CDC authorized, um, it's for people aged 50 to 64 years with underlying medical conditions, people aged 18 to 49 years with underlying medical conditions, people aged 18 to 64 years with an increased risk for COVID-19 exposure and transmission based on, upon occupational institutional setting. Um, if they feel as though they're, they're where they work, they're gonna be exposed, they're open to be able to get the, the booster. Um, and it's six months after you've received your series, or if they're immunocompromised, 28 <coughs> days after they received it. You guys have any questions on? Ms. Walker, the only question I have is when it says that the uh, people are eligible if they have an underlying medical condition, if, if it's my understanding, uh, they don't have to bring any proof of that. They just need to verbally state that right. they do have an underlying condition. Right, right, that's correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, as, as he talked about, one thing I will push is testing. You know, if you people think they have allergies or sinus infections, we encourage, you see in your packet, um, the test rate is in there, the positivity rate is in there, it's about 15% for the city. I look at the county weekly, I don't necessarily look at the city narrowed down. Um, we need more people to test so that we can kind of get a grip of it and kind of knock it out. Um, if you think you have symptoms, go test. We offer free testing every day at the health department. Um, any other questions? On the walk-ins at the King Center, will the walk-ins include the boosters yes, or will sir. those need to be? No, it'll be included. Pfizer. 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 Yes, sir. And then anybody that's immunocompromised will Thank be you. able to come and get it as well. And I think we should reemphasize that again for the record that uh, those individuals uh, who desire to have the booster with an underlying health condition can for sure. uh, walk in and get it at the Martin Luther King Center yes, All right, here in Muskogee. Is that the same also for the health department? Yes, sir. Thank you. And the, the difference is the Martin Luther King Center, you know, you just walk in. Right. Yeah. Thank you. There's no appointment needed. Testing, do they have to call in? No. Okay. Testing, you pull up to the back of the health department and they have a sign outside that says call our phone number. They take all your information over the phone and then the nurse comes out to your car. Also, you'll see our trailer going around the community. We do testing and vaccines there as well. Ma'am. The uh, booster shots, is that available only for Pfizer right now? Yes, sir. Um, are we Thursday, I think that? the 29th is when they'll, or Wednesday, whatever day this week is the 29th, is it Wednesday? They'll, um, they'll reevaluate, I believe Moderna's on the agenda for to be evaluated then. Okay. So it's, it's always a little bit delayed with Moderna, but they come strong. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions for Ms. Walker? Thank y'all for having me. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Mr. Evans. 
Yes, sir. That concludes my uh, presentation. If there's no further questions. The question I have, and, and it may be more of a statement versus a question, but I remember when the Commissioner of Health was here uh, for the state, he said that normally when a community hits the 50% mark is when you start to see a decline, uh, like we're seeing tonight. Um, do we know if that's a correlation yet, or is that just? I, I don't know. We've okay. got our fingers crossed that it is, and uh, okay. the coming weeks will for sure tell us. Okay. And I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity uh, to thank Deputy Mayor Derry Reed and the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center for opening up a weekly vaccination pod uh, here in the city of Muskogee. Uh, I think that's, that deserves applause. Yes. Um, because they did, <laughs> they, they did a lot of coordinating, a lot of planning uh, to be certain that we can get to that 50% number. So Deputy uh, Mayor, uh, to you and your staff, uh, certainly we want to take this time to thank you tonight for that. I just, I would just add, you know, not to brag, but it's 30 consecutive weeks this week. 30 consecutive weeks. Yeah. That's bragging. I think it should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Council, any other questions? Hey, Mr. Mayor, may we recognize? Yes, Mr. Van. I would just like uh, tonight to thank the superintendent of the Muskogee Public Schools and the school board for doing their due diligence and mandating for children to wear a mask in a school system. I think that's very important. And like I say, COVID is still here. You may not believe it, but it is. People are dying every day. You know, I, I listened to the report. I listened to another report at the meeting I was at the other night. But COVID ain't going nowhere. It's still here. But I just I want to make a special thank you to the school superintendent and the school board for seeing that and, and protecting our children that go to our public schools. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments uh, for Mr. Evans? Thank you, Mr. Evans. Thanks, sir. Mr. Miller, does that conclude the report? Yes, sir. Thank you all. Item number 11. Consider approval for application of, and if awarded, approval of acceptance of the OMAG sanitary sewer equipment for an amount to be determined by OMAG upon selection of the equipment or take other necessary action. Mr. Tucker. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would invite uh, Avery Rigney, who is our uh, uh, manager of workplace safety up to speak on this item. Mr. Rigby. Thank you. Uh, so I'm mainly up here to answer any questions about this grant. First, I'll provide a little bit of background info. Was that really? Yep. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this grant comes from the Oklahoma Municipal Assurance Group. They will do a one-to-one -one match up to $10,000 for any equipment uh, related to the process of sanitary sewer. So we're planning on getting a camera system to check out the inside of those pipes with it. Does anybody have any questions? Do we have any questions for Mr. Rigby on tonight? Do we have a motion? Move for, for approval. approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes, and the item passes. Item number 12. Consider approval for application of, and if awarded, acceptance of the OMAG Public Works Safety Equipment Grant in an amount up to $13,620 to be used for the purchase of traffic control devices or take other necessary action. Mr. Tucker? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for this item as well, we will turn this over to Mr. Rigney to speak uh, on behalf of the City Attorney's Office, Work, uh, Division of Workplace Safety. Mr. Rigney. Uh, this is another OMAG grant. They will match our, match our funds for any equipment related to public works and safety for our employees. So uh, we're going to use this, if awarded, to purchase traffic control devices such as barricades and navigators to help protect our employees working in or near the streets. Any questions? Do we have any questions for Mr. Rigby on tonight? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 13. 
Consider approval for application of, and if awarded, approval of acceptance of a reimbursement grant from the Oklahoma Office of Homeland Security in the amount of $2,087.70 for repairs needed for the Muskogee Fire Department's hazmat trailer or take other necessary action. Mr. Brock. Yes, sir. Uh, as she said, it was the uh, reimbursement for the repairs on the hazmat trailer. There had, needs to be some reinforcement and welding done. It has been done and the grant is uh, basically awarded already in full. Uh, there's no in-kind, there's no matching. It's just gonna be reimbursed by Homeland Security. Any questions? Do you have any questions for Mr. Brock or a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Thank you. The item passes. Item number 14. Consider approval of the creation of a task force comprised of the trustees of the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, MRA, to be charged with preparing bylaws, establishing the internal management structure of the MRA, as well as setting the initial meeting of the task force or take other necessary action. Councilor McGee. Yes, this is my uh, agenda item. Um, I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second on item number 14. Any discussion from the council? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. Item need, number 15. We need to set a date. That would be, yeah, you can do that. You can set a date or you can leave it with the uh, trustees who've now been appointed uh, and they can set a date and publicize it that way. Thank Either you. way you wanna do it. Okay. We'll just leave it with the trustees and we'll come back with the date. Thank you. Item number 15. Consider approval to create and populate a subcommittee to negotiate the transfer of any employees of the city to the MRA in furtherance of the MRA's management and operation of the city's economic development program or take other necessary action. Councilor McGee. Uh, yes, this is also my agenda. And as it's saying, this is for the uh, transfer of employees. So uh, we will create this subcommittee. Uh, uh, I'm proposing that that will be of the mayor, the deputy mayor, myself, and Councilman uh, Stephanie Morgan for that subcommittee. Thank you, Councilman McGee. Any questions on that item or do we have a motion to proceed? We got a motion to proceed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. Item number 16. Consider approval of the appointment of Corey Sisson to the Muskogee City County Port Authority, filling the unexpired term of Nancy Gaden beginning September 1, 2021 and ending August 31, 2023, or take other necessary action. Councilor Morgan. Yes, I do. Um, I met with Corey and I do believe he'd do really good on the Port Authority and move for approval. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second on item number 16. Any discussion from the council? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. Item number 17. Consider approval of the appointment of Delby Walker to the Planning and Zoning Commission, filling the unexpired term of Evelyn Hibbs, beginning October 1, 2021, and ending August 31, 2022, or take other necessary action. Councilor Van. Yes, I'd like Ms. Walker to come to the mic. Ms. Walker, you've been asked <laughs> to the microphone. See, sometimes I do things just a little different, <laughs> and y'all know that. So Ms. Walker, impress me. As you can see, um, you know, since I've been on the council since 2014, I appointed quite a few people to different boards. But this is the first time that I had an applicant that went out her way like Ms. Walker did. Did you see her resume? Most of them just put, you know, write the paper down, you know, and that's it and what they do. But she had a seven page resume. <laughs> so I, I want to congratulate Ms. Walker. 
taking this hill is a place up there, but I, 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 like I said, that's why I called you down because I want people to know that you how what all you do in our community, and you didn't have to go out of your way to have that resume like you did, but you did. Thank so you. I want to say thank you, Ms. Walker. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to put Ms. Walker on the planning and zoning board tonight. Second. Thank you, Councilor Van. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. We do not have any citizens wishing to speak to us on tonight, so we will proceed to item number 18. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Eric Twyman, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. B, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Steve Bouvet, and if necessary, Take appropriate action in open session. We will now entertain a motion to go into executive session. Move for approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. We'll ask all of you to please excuse yourselves from the room as we go into executive session at this time. Thank you. We will now return from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Mr. Tucker. Item 18A, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council did convene an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Eric Twyman. After being briefed on the status of that claim and the potential for settlement, I believe an appropriate motion would be to authorize the city attorney to uh, negotiate a settlement of Mr. Twyman's claim in the amounts discussed within executive session. Do we have a motion to that effect from the council? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Mr. Tucker. 18B, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council convened an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Steve Bouvet. After being briefed, briefed on the status of that claim and the potential for settlement, I believe an appropriate motion would be to authorize the city attorney to uh, settle the claim of Mr. Bouvet uh, in the amounts discussed in executive session. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. I believe that is the last item for tonight, and we are adjourned.